Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And if you're watching or listening on YouTube, Please subscribe and like if you like. And if you would like to support this free service, you can go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and make a donation. And the link is also on all of the all of my websites. Different places. My my main, my main website is still jasonnewland.com. That's kind of the hub. But I've got a special... I mentioned it yesterday, but a new podcast specifically just for the Let Me Bore You to Sleep. So it's a website. And you can still listen at all the regular places. Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher... Uh, I don't know you know the different places um, Spreaker of course which is and SoundCloud yeah I'm everywhere I'm all over the place um, that's it I think as far as the introduction goes it's just to let you know roughly to you know because it's a sleep recording, you know, I would have thought that telling people at the beginning to only listen when you can safely close your eyes would be um, like putting a warning on a peanut butter jar may contain nuts you know it's just seems like a silly thing to do but I do it anyway because you know I don't want to get I just, just want to make sure everyone's safe really uh, it was you know so many different variations of that that I could say you know, don't listen when you're using heavy machinery. Don't use it when you're driving. Don't you? So I thought, actually, it's pretty much don't use it when you're using your vision. Because you wouldn't be driving if you had your eyes closed. You wouldn't be operating a helicopter or a crane with your eyes closed. At least you shouldn't be. Uh, you shouldn't be driving a train with your eyes closed um, or digging a ditch or you know organizing traffic or if you're a lollipop lady or man you shouldn't be <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't have your eyes closed doing that uh, of course you can blink because I suppose technically we've all got our eyes closed whatever we're doing because we're blinking aren't we at certain times and now I'm aware of the blinking I'm doing but I wasn't before that it's uh, the power of speech and wow now I'm aware of my feet because I'm now looking at them whoa so instead of going through a list of every single possible Thing that you might be doing whilst listening to this I kind of managed to come up with only listen when you can safely close your eyes it pretty much covers everything of course uh, you know who knows I mean perhaps 
I don't know. I mean, people close their eyes when they skydive, perhaps a little bit, but it probably wouldn't. Have, you wouldn't want something to send you to sleep. But I, I very much doubt that my voice would be able to send you to sleep when you travel, traveling thousands of miles towards the the ground. I think. It would keep you awake. Uh, that would, I think, I'd. Uh, that would be a battle I near lose, which is good. Clock's gone forward about thirty-seven minutes ago. So instead of being one twenty-seven and twenty-two seconds, it's now two thirty-seven. And 28 seconds. Because that's how long it took me. It took six seconds. See, six seconds went past just in that short period between um, the gap, really, between saying those two words, those two sentences. Yet the other day I was waiting for a bus. And it was 20, 20 minutes to wait. It lasted about an hour. I was watching the time because there was a clock on this big screen. And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll close my eyes because I do close my eyes at weird times, but. I was standing waiting for a bus, so uh, ideally you wouldn't really want to be listening to this when you are standing up uh, in case you fell asleep standing up. But I don't imagine there's that many people that are able to fall asleep standing up, but there might be. But I can't cover everything. I mean, I can't, you know. I can't put a... It'd just be rude, wouldn't it, if I just put a... If I had a message, you know, please don't listen to this if you're stupid. You know, that, that'd be rude. So that's why I try and cover it with, you know, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Um, and... I was counting a minute in my head. It's like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And I went all the way to 60. And I opened my eyes, and the clock had still not turned over. And I didn't, I wasn't counting correctly. I mean, what was it, the, um, what was the old saying? Is it one Huckleberry Finn, two Huckleberry Finn? Or was it one Raspberry Flan, two Raspberry Flans, three Raspberry Flans, four Raspberry Flans, five Raspberry, and that kind of give you a second. Because just one isn't enough, but there needs to be a gap unless you stretch the one out. So instead of one, two, three, it's like one. But not too much though. It's not like one, two. sounds a bit it sounds a bit mentra kind of mentric kind of the thing is even if I'd have done it at that speed whilst waiting for the bus the minute still wouldn't have been up honestly time just went really slowly 
And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hypnotise my brain. I'm going to try to use a bit of time distortion. And, you know, by using some kind of, you know, techniques and thinking about things and, you know, imagining standing in the queue of a bank with only 10 minutes left of my uh, lunch break and knowing that I have to get back to work in 10 minutes time and it's a it's a 9 minute walk and I've still got four people in front of me and I need to go I need to get to the bank I need to do what I need to do because it's important but I also need to get back to work and I'm just standing you look I'm looking at the clock and the clock's doing exactly the opposite to what it was at the bus stop and it was like going you could see it just going around really quickly and there was a you know there's an old lady having a good old chat come for a chat put a chair and everything just to sit in I was just chatting about a good old days like okay and there's another person brought in about six thousand pounds worth of two pence pieces. So like, oh great. And they opened another cashier and I thought, okay, we'll get the queue will go down now and the person walks up to them and says, Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me a bit about your business banking. I was like, oh no. No. No, that's not what I want. Time was going by so quick. So I thought if I did this, if I tried to get my mind into that zone, I could then speed up time so that I experience time whilst waiting for the bus the same way as I was waiting in that queue of the bank as it was going quickly because I needed to get it done and I needed to get back to work. And I started thinking about something else and I think someone asked me for some spare change or something, I don't know. And I just got distracted and thought about other things. But yeah, it was a really thinking about doing that I thought let me get my mind you know wrapped around the idea of that clock that that mentality that state of mind where time really does go quickly so the clocks went forward you know 44 minutes ago and well, 44 minutes, 45 minutes and two, three seconds. Five, six, seven seconds, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty. 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. So that's quite quick, isn't it? I'm sure the seconds don't normally go that quickly. Because I'm reading it off the screen on the telly, it's on, it's on mute. So it's 30 seconds, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Yeah, when I was going one, two, three, four, you know, which is kind of half the speed, got to 60, the clock's still not gone past a minute. So it's as if my television is at a different speed, and it might be some kind of time distortion. 
because I'm talking about it and now it seems to be going really quick. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. I've been going to bed about four o'clock in the morning. But it's not even two o'clock yet, not really. Not in real real terms. So it's thrown me all asunder. I don't know what to do. It's uh, Mother's Day tomorrow. I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but in... In England it is Mothering Sunday and I was watching this article on the news on television and they were saying that now out of all the occasions where the adverts try to get us to spend money after Christmas Mother's Day is the second uh, most profitable day for businesses. It's the second most amount of money that's spent on an event, you know, on a like a day, a celebration. Above Easter, um, the thing is. In reality, it's not though, is it? Because if a family, you know, it's, it's, if it's someone's a mother, chances are the family, they'll be spending a lot more money on birthday presents for each of the people than on Mother's Day, I'm guessing. But what about Father's Day? I don't know when that is, but apparently this doesn't come close to being as popular. So, yeah. We don't have Thanksgiving in England. Um, so, I'm guessing in America, Thanksgiving, I don't know. I, I know Thanksgiving is in, in November. I kind of understand the point of it. But what I don't know, I know that, you know, it's a, like a, a family get together and uh, you know, it's a big celebration in America. Probably as big as, as Christmas, possibly, as far as the day up again, I don't know. But I don't know. Do you give each other presents? Isn't it weird? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know why I'm getting so excited about it. I'm actually getting really interested in not knowing something. I'm getting little spine tingles of excitement, which I don't normally get. Wow, I wonder why I don't know that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, it's because I don't care. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. I don't care. I don't care. I just... But I want to care. It's more interesting to care. But I don't really. But it's, I'm kind of interested. But I'm not. You know, it's... Oh. So I wonder, do you get presents wrapped up and you give it to each other? Or... Is it more about um, thanking each other for, I don't know, do you thank each other for what you've done? So, I'll thank you for mowing the lawn last Wednesday. Maybe you read a big list out of things that you you're thankful for for other people that, that what they've done thank you for not leaning against the wall when I painted it back in August uh, 
thank you for flushing the toilet this morning um, after I'd been in there because I forgot because I was in such a rush to get to work but thank you for flushing it afterwards and um, also thanks for reminding me how you needed to flush it and I thank, I'm thankful for the whole experience because it it gave us something to talk about yeah a list of thankful things what would I be thankful for would I be thankful for now or would it be what would I be thankful for like forever you know not forever but not always feel thankful about it but what have I been thankful for in the past I suppose there's little things I'm thankful to the internet because the internet has given me an opportunity to I suppose to reach the outside world and to be me so that could have rhymed if I'd have missed out the outside world so the internet to me has given me the opportunity to be me but then that's the same as me at the first bit unless I call it the internet the internet yeah anyway I get an opportunity to be the boring chatty person that I am without having to edit myself without having to be concerned about being judged or having to explain myself or having to fit in with all the rules and of society and or having to be pretend to be something that I'm not and I realize that those things are you know sometimes really important in order to get on with life and to fit in with society but doing this stuff these recordings and I might not be right I might not be but I like to think that the regular listeners are kind of accepting towards me and you sort of welcome my what I've always kind of classed as possibly a little bit weird I always felt weird but I don't feel weird at this moment I feel weird when I'm trying not to be myself because my natural self isn't sweary or aggressive or you know but I can be like that well we all can I suppose but my natural self is relaxed and calm and light and like to just play around and a bit cheeky maybe and like to just have a little bit of fun maybe maybe it's just verbal fun but not always that easy I think 
to be like that. You know, opportunity just to be you. And I think that's partly a benefit of maybe being in a relationship, uh, like a romantic relationship. Maybe, you know, I suppose if you're sleeping in a bed with somebody and you're breathing in each other's farts daily, you you know, you, you you get to know the person and you get to kind of just be yourself, hopefully, eventually, and just relax into it. And I kind of didn't want to conform but I did want to conform at the same time because what conforming gave me is money uh, if I conformed I could have girlfriends uh, somewhere to live food you know just uh, kind of a mild amount of respect from others but not conforming not as like a re- I, I kind of not as a rebellious thing but as a kind of I suppose letting the mask slip a bit sometimes you know at work I kind of forget where I was and I'd say something and I get told off like oh you can't say that (gasps) no I can't believe he just said that and sometimes it's just honesty you know and I'd be talking about myself and just say something but it was like oh that's too personal Put your trousers back on. You know, just that general kind of things. Never liked interviews. I think it's... What would I write down if I was thankful? So that's probably the first thing. So I'd be thankful for the opportunity to... Suppose be able to make these boring recordings because I probably say that they're the things I enjoy making the most, and I didn't think I would, to be honest, because I thought, oh, this is gonna, this is really gonna be boring, um, which it is at times, really, really boring. And whatever level of boredom you think I may have reached, I can, I can increase thousandfold. I know how to go. I I know that I can be the most boring person on the planet if I choose to be. I know how to know how to do it. But I'm not sure if I go too, too deep into the boringness. I worry that I might not come out the other end. I just, I might just fall asleep and just, I just don't want to stay like that. I don't want to wake, don't want to wake up and be in that state of like real boring, you know where I'm walking up to people and just talking at them about just random things that have no interest to the person. And that's what being boring is, really. It's it's not talking about boring subjects. It's just talking about something that the other people find is boring. That's what a boring person is. They're not, not necessarily a boring person. 
because when they're around other people that are interested in what they're interested in, they'll probably be classed as an exciting person. So I kind of know what it feels like to be on both sides of that tennis court. Because the only things I like talking about is, well, mainly me, but the things that I like. And that will depend on the day. You know, the other day I would have talked to you about The Walking Dead television show. But I don't talk about that stuff, you know, because I forgot about it and just... It, but it's something that I would have probably wanted to discuss if I was having a two-way conversation. Then I'd pick a subject. If well, if I could pick a subject, I'd pick a subject that was interesting to me, which I think is kind of normal, really. It's just standard stuff. But... Other times I might not be that interested in talking about a television program. I might want to talk about shoes. Um, because I need to get a pair of shoes. And I bought some shoes for uh, a lady uh, a couple of weeks back who sells the big issue. And she's homeless so I bought her some shoes because it was cold, it was raining and her, her shoes all had holes in them. So, and in case you're thinking I'm saying that just to to show off how generous and charitable I am, you're right. That is exactly the only reason I'm talking about it. Because I want to be held up in high esteem by the world. And I would like to get a Nobel Peace Prize for buying a pair of shoes. That's my aim. It's been my goal in life for a long, long time. And you may say, that how, how, how is buying a pair of shoes going to cause world peace? Well, my answer to that would be, has anybody that's won the Peace Prize caused world peace? And you can argue that one. You say, oh, no, true. So... But I'm not comparing myself to Gandhi. I don't know why there was a pause there. I'm just not. It's it's quite weird. I don't know if you know. Like I watched Gandhi back in what eighty four, nineteen eighty four. In case you think I'm talking about seventeen eighty four. Oh, 1784, I remember that version of Gandhi, yeah, it was great, that was, yes, it was, uh, yeah, it was on stage though, because there's no television back then, nom, nom, nom. plus he hadn't been born, um, no, 17, 18, 1984, 19, or might, it might have been 1982, but for some reason, sure it wasn't 1983 isn't it weird that sometimes if you like, think of a date it might not be like a specific date as in the 4th of November it, but it might be a year and I think oh it's like oh that I'm sure. Yeah, it wasn't 83. You know, it's like, no, that doesn't sound right. Like, 1983 doesn't sound right for the film Gandhi. But it might be. I'm pretty sure it's not earlier than 1980. But I think it was about 1984. But it might be 82, but I'm pretty sure it's not 83. And I don't think it's after 84. Because it was a long time ago. I mean, Gandhi did quite well, didn't he? He won, was it, he got the Nobel Peace Prize. 
plus you won an Oscar. So I think he's the only person that had won both of those. And what else? What's weird is there was a film called um, it had Ray Winston in it. And he was a gangster living in Spain. And this was in the 90s, this film was. Probably late 90s. Pretty... Pretty something. Oh, Sexy Beast. A film called Sexy Beast. With Ray Winstone. And... I don't know if you know who Ray Winstone is, but he's he's a famous actor, but he's he's like a legend in England. He's a legend actor. He's like um, much loved over here, and he's kind of like in the same the same league as sort of Bob Hoskins. Kind of been around for quite a while. He's I mean, Ray Winstone, he's been around since he was a teenager, like, making films. And he's now probably in his... I'm guessing he's older than me. Probably by not that much, so he's got to be in his 50s. Um, so he's been around for like 40, over 40 years. Well, over 50 years, because he's in his 50s, but he's... I think he was in... A film uh, called Borstal or something, and that was in nineteen in the may, uh, early eighties or something. And he was, I think, he was about seventeen at the time. And he was really slim back then. I mean, he's a big bloke now, but he was he was slim, but he was young. And the thing is about. I think when you're young, well, not not everybody, obviously. Um, it's not ele- not all elephants can swim. You know, uh, well, there's going to be the odd one, isn't there? That like, oh god, I didn't. Oh no. I love the way they hold on to each other's tails and trunks. Like that's going to make a blind bit of difference if one of them sinks. But it's optimistic, isn't it? I wonder if elephants do float, though. There's got to be quite a bit of air inside their tummies. Because they are big. And... Water retention. And water on top of water floats. Also... Fat on top of water floats. Because if you put, if you get a tub of lard, like literally a tub of lard, I'm not talking about uh, a person, I'm talking about a tub, literally, I don't know where you get tubs, (laughs) tubs of lard from, but you can get cubes of lard and they're kind of wrapped up in. It's like this paper, but it's not really paper. It's like stalk SB was one. Well, that, that I think it was lard or that was butter. But there's lard that you use uh, maybe for cooking, baking and stuff. But it's in a special kind of grease, grease paper, which... I don't know. I don't know why, again, I'm getting excited about grease paper. So that's two things. I'm getting like really nostalgic y and kind of excited, like grease paper and earlier, you know, Thanksgiving. Do you give pa- do you give presents on Thanksgiving? I'm getting a rush of euphoria. That's so weird. So what's I talking about? Oh yeah, films. So Grey Winstone was he was slim. He was very slim. I was slim. When I was at school, see, I think, I think I was premature. 
and that's a problem I've had all all throughout life in different ways but I I was I think I was born born too soon and I was very little both my older brothers were a lot bigger than me and they were older than me but they would be bigger because they were older but but they were bigger I mean in comparison to what I was when I was or when they were my age so I'll give you an example so when I was 10 my oldest my older brother of two years older he was bigger than me because he was 12 but when he was 10 he was bigger than I was not because I was 8 but I'm saying at the same time if you if you put a 10 year old version of me next to a 10 year old version of my older brother the one that was 2 years older than me he was bigger than me he was bigger, stronger, broader you know uh, just bigger and if you'd have got my oldest brother who was 4 years older than me and got him at the age of 10 he was probably slimmer not slimmer but he was not slimmer than me but he was taller I think when you're tall you look sometimes you look slimmer when you're taller so he was a lot taller than I was and he was taller than my other brother at 10 so my tallest brother is over 6 foot I'm 5 foot 8 and probably my uh, my two years older brother is probably about 6 foot and the other one's probably 6'2 or 6'3 or something uh, maybe I don't know I lose track. I've never measured them I'll be honest I tried to a few times but they kept waking up <laughs> um, so I was it wasn't just a height thing I was just really little like I had I was very slim and I do I, I refer to myself as being skinny back then and I know not everybody likes the word and I kind of don't care because I'm referring to myself but I really was underweight but I was eating you know I used to have a well I say I was eating and to be fair I didn't always like my packed lunch and I prefer to eat sweets yeah so perhaps but I always had a cooked meal in the evening always had a couple of cooked meals at like you know during the at the weekends like lunchtime in the evening as well always had breakfast so you know I didn't didn't go without or anything but I just and it's not like I pooed more either I just just didn't put weight on and I stayed really 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 slim for a long long time long time and it got to the point where actually I tried to put weight on so you hear the you're going to hear the um, you're going to hear the chair squeak a little bit because I need to scratch my left buttock that's better it's quite weird my left buttock feels you know you get that dirty itch sometimes if I haven't kind of washed for a bit and I kind of oh I need to change my underpants and it's that just itch of just dirt it's like please just wash me yeah but that wasn't because I've had a bath today so that wasn't a dirty itch that was just a maybe it's a sweaty itch I don't know just an itch maybe I shouldn't look too much into it I used to be really slim and even when when I was like 14 and 15 I was doing karate 
I was training hard every day. I was training. Absolutely loved it. For the first time in my life, I was actually just loving what I was doing. But I couldn't put, I could put muscle, I did put muscle on, but I didn't put any weight on. I was still like eight and a half stone. And I didn't have any, any fat on me at all. It was just all muscle. You know, when I took my top off, it was like I was this little, I was just quite muscular. But what it really looked like, I used to look in the mirror and think, I look like Bruce Lee. And some would say, you know, how can you look Chinese? But it wasn't about that. It was about the the muscles. It was, you know. And the reality really is if you go online and look up the most muscular child you know I've not it's not something that I've looked up but it's something that was in the news like years and years ago and it was this like 8 year old kid that was just muscular that's probably what I looked like I looked like a little child with muscles I didn't look like a 14 or 15 year old so it's probably a bit weird. I remember once I was standing outside my door of my room, my bedroom, and there was a mirror on the other side of the wall. And I was posing, doing like my bodybuilding poses. And uh, for some reason it looked better from a distance. But I was doing these and I was grunting and I was I was like doing the if you've seen bodybuilders you on stage, you know, the, if you want to know what I looked like, just watch Pumping Iron. You know, I was very much uh but without the muscles. And I didn't realise my brother was behind me. Not not actually behind me because I'd have seen him in the mirror, wouldn't I? But he was like on the stairs, like laughing at me. I was very I was nearly embarrassed but it's hard to get embarrassed with your brothers when you've seen each other every day for 15, 16 years and you've spent time in the bath with them you know, when you're younger and you've slept in the same bed as them at certain times. and It's, it's hard to actually... You can embarrass each other in front of other people but you can't embarrass each other between yourselves because you kind of know so much about each other because you've just seen the person grow up which is quite amazing but so uh, I think about that sometimes think about the I don't know just think about things I'd like to I wanted to put weight on so but it wasn't because I wanted to be um, have a big tummy like I've got now you know at no point was I sitting at home reading my bodybuilding magazines thinking yeah I want to look like that that bloke from Little Britain I want to I have a big big belly and it's like I didn't expect to ever have that. Like my dad's a big man, you know. Not he's just very stocky, and he's got a belly on him, but he's strong, strong as anything. And he always had a bit of a belly. Just you know, just the way he's, he's kind of born that way. It's basically his baby belly. He just kind of kept it. <laughs> um. I shouldn't say that, but he, I didn't expect to end up with the same kind of body type as him because I really didn't have that shaped body when I was a kid. You know, when I was like growing up, I was just so slim. And... When I was 16, and I started, uh, no, 15, I 
I started earning money because I left school when I was 15 and I started working full time straight away and I started eating a bodybuilder's diet until he found out and then I kind of had to buy my own food Buddha boom 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 now I started I got this book called Optimum Health or The Optimum Bodybuilder's Diet or something like that and you know it's kind of like eating eggs having an omelette uh, every morning and lots of salad fruit vegetables you know uh, poultry dairy products it's kind of just uh, vitamins alfalfa and kelp with one particular mixture that was supposed to be good for producing muscle growth uh, also I used to take like the protein drinks you know ones you kind of mix yourself uh, so yeah I was really into it I couldn't put an ounce on seriously couldn't put any weight on at all just didn't work and then gradually I put a little bit of weight on as I kind of got a little bit older and I think the biggest jump was when I went on antidepressants into 1995 I put about a stone on I went up to about 10 stone or maybe yeah because I was walking around about 9 stone maybe 9.5 before that but that extra stone or half a stone really made a difference to the way I felt and like I put yeah I was like wow and I was able to sort of when I was doing security in 1996 1997 I put weight on because uh, at one time I was just sitting on my bum all night long for about 14, 15 hours a day six days a week and I remember my friend who I lived with he said your bum's getting big I was like I didn't enjoy hearing that I'll be honest with you I'm sure he didn't mean it in a hurtful way but you know when you do what you can you do what you can you got mirrors you can you know you can do what you can with what you can see I can't see my bum I can't see it I don't know what it looks like I've never seen my bum ever hoping to lose weight off my belly so I can start seeing other parts that I haven't seen for a long time it's like telling your oh, bum's a bit big it's like but Kevin oh, I wasn't happy so what was that about why are you, what are you telling me I've got a big bum for he said, well, you have. I said, yeah, but... You, you, know, you don't walk around just making statements about everything you see. He said, yeah, but... Your bum's in the way of the television. I said, it's not in the way of the television. I was lying down on the floor watching television. He was trying to make out that he couldn't see the screen because of my big bum wobbling which is a lie it's not the television wasn't flat on the floor you know the, yeah it was standing up like a normal television you know off the floor 
you know, head height if you're sitting in a chair. I think he was just trying to wind me up. There's not really any end to that story, but I just, I feel I'd let it go now. I've been holding that in for, what, 24 years? Oh, oh so therapeutic. Ooh, I wonder what else is in there. Let's open another door. <laughs> I managed to put away on. So I think I went up to like 11, 11 half stone at that time. But it really was a case of I was still slim because as soon as I stopped doing that job, I lost the weight. And I went back to being about 10 stone. So it really was a case of just a lack of doing anything, a lack of exercise. And I like to do quite a bit of exercise. Because I lived, I lived around the corner from, um, yeah, after 96, well, 96 onwards really kind of, I lived around the corner from a gym. And this gym... So I used to go in, I used to go past this gym for years, right? And even with friends like on the way to work and stuff, and we'd look in the window and there would be a picture of this bodybuilder. And it was a cardboard cutout. And it was about, I don't know, Four six, four seven, maybe under five foot anyway, about five foot tall, this cardboard cut out, and it's like the most muscular man you'll ever see. Absolutely huge bodybuilder, but like really short, like really kind of compact. And I thought they obviously took the picture and they've kind of made it smaller so they could fit into the window. And I used to walk past that gym and think I'll go in there one day but it'll be too expensive and but it turned out it wasn't it wasn't that expensive I just paid as I went paid a fiver or four pound every time and I'd go in a couple of times a week and I became good friends with well good friends just became friendly with Wilf who's the owner of the gym and his name was Wilf Sylvester you can Google him if you want. He's uh, if you're still awake. He's he was a Mister Universe, I think, twice, and he worked for the Ford Motor Company in Dagenham, and they sponsored him, uh, and they let him go and you know go to Cape Town or wherever the Mister Universe contest was, and they'd let him have like you know a few weeks off work to go and do that. And he was a bit of a like a, a local or national hero for a while, but he was Mr. Universe in maybe the late seventies or early eighties, something like that. Like it's a long time ago. I met him about ninety six, and he yeah, so he'd been it was like twenty years before that he was Mr. Universe, but I met him. And he was this, he was the size of the cardboard cut out. See, I notice people that are short because I'm not particularly tall. So when I meet someone that's, because I'm used to, I used to meeting people that are taller than me. When I meet someone that's shorter than me, like a man, I notice it more. It's just like, I think if someone's really tall, they're going to notice it when they meet someone that's taller than them. So if someone's like six foot five and you meet someone that's six foot nine, you're going to be like, wow, it's really going to stand out for you, isn't it? Um, I know that I'm not like majorly short, but I'm five eight. So that's short for a man, depending on what part of the world you live, of course, because apparently... 
we've got different spine lengths and different types of the world different parts if I was I don't know yeah, I think in some parts like Russia I think the men sort of are much taller average than the men in England I think uh, it's a safe thing it's it's, it's not always the same, but it's, I think statistically, I think it's, uh, they're just taller, seem to be taller. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I won't talk any more about different parts of the world because there's a lot of generalisation goes into that, isn't there? But apparently there's some places where I perhaps wouldn't be, seem as short as... I don't always feel sure because there's only a it's not a lot of difference between five for eight and probably the average is about five ten. You know, just under six. There's only a couple of inches between me and the average, but you know, we also we all know two inches is a hell of a lot sometimes and it could really make a difference. So I I notice it when I meet someone that's a lot shorter than me, and he was. But I tell you something: their muscles. You know, I've never ever met in my life uh, someone that's won Mister Universe. You know, ever. That's the first time, as far as I know. I've met, I've seen bodybuilders, you know, occasionally it's hard not to see them because they're huge and they stand out and they, which is probably why they do what they do because they want to stand out and be looked at and good luck to them because they worked hard for it. But this uh, Will Sylvester, he was just, he was short but he was wide and he's, he had statistically... I mean, really big into statistics today. I think he had the largest bicep of any bold bodybuilder in history in his category because he was in a much lower weight than sort of Arnold um, was because they had like the low weights. I don't know if there's how many different weight classes there were, but he was in a much, you know, because he was a lot lighter. And and sh- maybe they had a weight for short <laughs> different section of people under five foot I don't think um, he might have been more than five foot but he was he was definitely quite a bit shorter than me but he was so funny and he was from the Caribbean I think and he was brilliant to be around honestly I used to chat to him and he was part of the reason I went back to the gym really to go because I could have gone to a different gym I suppose although his one was near me so it's and I've always kind of been lazy but you know it's what for me you know if you go into a gym and you see someone that's a former Mr Universe that's a superstar, you know, in bodybuilding terms. Mr. Olympia, Mr. Universe, that's superstardom. That's the heights of uh, physical perfection as far as bodybuilders go. And he was just like a, a regular man. He had, he'd retired from working at Ford's. His, his dream was to own a gym, and that's what he did. He owned, he got a gym. And he was a local celebrity, as I said. He's in the papers and stuff, and much loved. And he's such a lovely person, seriously. And we used to, yeah, he just like always there to help. You know, he didn't, he wasn't in it to make any money, just in it to help. It was lovely. And he also had a punch bag in the gym as well which is good because I like punch bags and uh, I saw him boxing it you know punching it once and I thought whoa you know those muscles they're strong that's one heck of a strong body 
well, I don't know how old he was at that time. Probably, he must have been in his 50s. It may, may, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine he'd be in his early 50s. Maybe late 40s, but early 50s, maybe later. He looked young, but it's hard to tell um, kind of what age he was. But I imagine he was in his 50s. He had grown up children. Um, I was in my late, well, like middle 20s, uh, 26, 27. Yeah, so... Yeah, he probably had about 25 years on me, I'd say. But yeah, he was nice. I liked him a lot. And I used to see him even when I stopped going to the gym. He'd be outside the gym and I'd walk past and have a quick, have a little chat with him. You know, see how he's getting on and that. I'd be on my way to work or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes he'd be talking to someone else and I'd say hello. Sometimes I'd wave, he didn't see me, so I'd walk around the block again, hoping that this time he would see me. If that didn't happen, maybe I'd just stop and do my shoelaces up in the middle of whoever he's talking with, so he had to see me. But, you know, just normal stuff. But I wanted to put weight on. Just, it's weird, I got my wish and I kind of don't want that anymore. <laughs> I don't really want this weight anymore. I want, it. I want to be young and fruity and juicy and slim, you know, like I used to be. And, uh, young and juicy and fruity and slim. But it's really, it's, it's basically, I had this period of time when, I think it was 2000, probably 99, maybe 2000, probably 99 actually, yeah, 99. And I really worked out hard. I did a lot of training, physical training, and my body was good. It was probably the best my body's been you know, muscular, I was wearing tight tops and it worked, you know. I still wasn't heavy. I still was probably no more than 10 stone or 10 and a half stone, probably 10 stone. Yeah, so I wasn't heavy, but I was buff, if that's the right word. And it didn't last long because I, you know, I didn't really stick to it, but, you know, I was... My friend Kevin wouldn't have told me I got a big bum then. But yeah, I was, just, I was just really quite pleased with how my body was kind of looking, with clothes on anyway. And because uh, people can't see the cactus on my back when I've got clothes on. So, and then I, uh, yeah. As I got older, a few things happened, and yeah, now I'm, I don't know how much I weigh now, I'm just under 100 kilos. That sounds heavy, doesn't it? 100 kilos, you wouldn't lift, be able to lift it. 100 kilos, so whatever that is. But I think I am losing weight, because about a month ago, I was just over 100 kilos. Two weeks after that, I was 200 kilos. No, I was 100 kilos. And then a few days ago, I was just under, like one one kilo less. So I'd lost a kilo in two weeks. Something like that. So, 100 more weeks and I'll, I'll be down to nothing. It'll be good. So I've lost a bit of bit of weight. I think it's just maybe the seasonal thing. Now we're getting into summer. I don't need the. I'm a bit like a walrus, really. I don't need the extra blubber to keep me warm. 
So uh, Andre's the same. He's lost a bit of weight. He's quite slim at the moment. Doesn't need that extra, you know, even though he doesn't really hibernate, but it's still a natural thing for animals that would normally live in the wild to sort of put a bit of weight on, you know, ready for the winter. Just a bit of reserve. I've got extra reserve. I'm like a reserve park. So yeah, I kind of... I'd like to slim down. Just the only bit really is my stomach. The rest is... Well, I don't know, I mean... I'm not sure about my bum. Maybe I need to give my friend a call. See if he'll... Go on Skype and I'll show my bum. See if it's big or not. I don't know. Is the only one would probably tell me. Not something you can really ask somebody, is it? It's just you know, on the bus. Oh, but excuse me. Might be sort of a weird question, but is my bum big? I mean, if they say which one, then you know you're in trouble. Let's say which buttock that's a, that's a better buttocks are not individual bums anyway on that sensible note I should say goodbye because we've gone over the 60 minute mark and hopefully you've fallen asleep through boredom and that's another successful event completed blah 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 but yeah, check out Ray Winston, it's very good. Um, there was a point to what I was saying there, but I've lost it now, I've forgotten. But uh, take care.